Hi, I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, Professor of Data Science, and here to give you the first look at the Decision Desk HQ 2022 election forecasting model. So every week, DDHQ data team will run our proprietary model to forecast the outcome of every single seat in the United States House and Senate, and will provide you a mean seat prediction for both parties. That means that every week you'll know what party we are predicting will win the majority in the House and the Senate. So let's dig into our forecast for some of these key races. On the Senate side overall, we predict that Democrats have a 54% chance at a majority come this 2022 election. So better than flipping a coin. But to give a little context, we did 14 million simulations of different situations with different parties winning different seats and all the different combinations. And 54 times out of 100, the Democrats win. That's actually pretty good odds. Now, a lot can happen to move four percentage points, but it's still a pretty good odd that the Democrats will win the Senate. So our best forecast is 50 seats for the Republicans and 50 seats for the Democrats, with Vice President Kamala Harris still being the deciding vote. So for the Senate, we have three key toss-up seats in this prediction that we'll be following through November 8th, Election Day. They're Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Georgia. So Pennsylvania's seat is currently held by Republican Pat Toomey, but he's retiring. So it's a wide open field, or it was until recently. Democratic nominee, Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, has a roughly 54% chance of flipping the seat for the Democrats, so a pretty good chance. He's had a recent run of really good polls, with the DDHQ polling average showing him up by 5.2%. The Republican nominee, Mehmet Oz, also trails Fetterman in the fundraising race. He raised $1.1 million in the second quarter compared to Fetterman's $5.5 million. That's almost five times more. That's a lot. But there is still a lot that can happen in this race, so we're currently rating it as a toss-up. It is definitely not in the bag. The other two seats to closely watch are Nevada and Georgia, which are both currently held by Democrats. So Nevada's Democratic Catherine Cortez Masto is the more vulnerable of the two Democratic held states, with only a 56% chance of holding her seat. So the question would be is why is she so vulnerable? Well, in 2016, she only won by 2.4%, and her margin of raw votes was smaller than, quote, none of these candidates, which is a fun Nevada twist on their election polls. I guess they have more twists than just prostitution. But anyway, um, if you also put in the GOP gains among Hispanic voters and the overall environment because of inflation, she's not so safe. So in Georgia, Democrat Raphael Warnick has a 58% chance of holding the seat he won in a special election in 2020. And the DDHQ polling average for this rate shows essentially a dead heat. So how is that possible that he has a higher percentage chance, whereas the polling average shows a dead heat? So with the polling averages, there are 13 eligible polls in this average, and Warnick leads by 0.6%. That is so tiny that it's almost irrelevant. So it is a dead heat. But Warnick holds a substantial fundraising lead. He has $22 million cash on hand, which is a nice chunk of change, whereas the Republican candidate, Herschel Walker, only has $7 million. So that's how the polls are a dead heat, but we rate the election as leaning towards him as a Democrat. But what is important to know, to sum up, is that even with these contested races seemingly leaning Democratic, the Republicans could still easily come out on top. Because all the Republicans need to do is hold all of their current seats, including the open race in Pennsylvania, and win just one of the toss-up lean seats, and they'll take control of the Senate. And one reason that the model shows a toss-up slight Democratic advantage in the Senate is at this point the model is relying heavily on the fundamentals. And since the Democrats are defending more seats, they still have that fundamental incumbent advantage. And this might change, and it probably will, as more race-level polling is done after Labor Day. So let's move over to the House. 
The Decision Desk HQ model says that Republicans have an 88% chance of taking the majority in the next Congress. So with 88%, I don't want to say that the Republicans have it in the bag, but they can they kind of do have it in the bag. So our best forecast is 235 Republican seats compared to 200 seats for the Democrats. So right now we rate 13 House seats as quote toss up seats. Nine are in seats currently held by the Democrats or that we rate as Democratic leaning. Three are in GOP or GOP leaning seats and one is a newly created district because of the redistricting that just happened. So it's important to note though that three of the potential GOP pickup opportunities of these toss-ups are in Oregon, three are in Oregon. So in Oregon four, Republican Alex Scarlatos outraised Democrat Val Hoyle in quarter two with $660,000 cash on hand compared to Hoyle's 487,000. So not a deciding factor in any case, but certainly something to note. And in Oregon 5, moderate Democrat, seven-term incumbent Kurt Schrader was defeated in the primary by progressive Jamie McLeod Skinner, which might give the Republicans an edge in the general because if they're electing these super progressive candidates who may not do quite as well in the general, it gives the Republicans a little bit of an edge. And then finally, we have Oregon 6, which is the newly added district, the newly created one after reapportionment from the 2020 census. So it's going to be a super super interesting one to watch. It's important to look at what sort of the general overall leaning of the country is. So DDHQ has a generic ballot estimate and it's showing Republican plus 2.7 points. Now this generic ballot, it's an average of a ton of polls, including 538, Real Clear Politics, DDHQ polls. And while it's not a deciding factor in how the country is leaning, it's definitively indicative. Inflation at 9.1%, the highest in the US in my lifetime, it's really not looking good for the Democrats. The country is absolutely leaning Republican. And that's going to be a very hard thing to pull out of before November. So that's going to do it for this week. I hope you enjoyed our first look at the DDHQ 2022 forecast model. And I'll be back next week, which should be super exciting because we're including a lot more of the quarter two FEC reporting data that may shake up some races while potentially reinforcing expectations in others. So until then, I'm Dr. Liberty Vitter. Thanks so much for watching.